morning and welcome to St. Stephen's and St. Barnabas Online. We're very glad that you've decided to join us this morning. After this uh, brief service on Facebook Live, if you would like to join us for continued conversation via Zoom, uh, please stay tuned for more information about that at the end of the service. Blessed be God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, and blessed be God's kingdom now and forever. Amen. Almighty God, to you all hearts are open, all desires known, and from you no secrets are hid. Cleanse the thoughts of our hearts by the inspiration of your Holy Spirit that we may perfectly love you and worthily magnify your holy name through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. Let us pray. O God, who wonderfully created and yet more wonderfully restored the dignity of human nature, grant that we may share the divine life of him who humbled himself to share our humanity, your Son, Jesus Christ, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God, forever and ever. Amen. A reading from Jeremiah. For thus says the Lord, sing aloud with gladness for Jacob, and raise shouts for the chief of the nations. Proclaim, give praise, and say, Save, O Lord, your people, the remnant of Israel. See, I am going to bring them from the land of the north, and gather them from the farthest parts of the earth. Among them, the blind and the lame, those with child, and those in labor together, a great company, they shall return here. With weeping they shall come, and with consolations I will lead them back. I will let them walk by brooks of water in a straight path in which they shall not stumble. For I have become a father to Israel, and Ephraim is my firstborn. Hear the word of the Lord, O nations, and declare it in the coastlands far away. Say, he who scattered Israel will gather them and will keep, them, will keep him as a shepherd a flock. For the Lord has ransomed Jacob and has redeemed him from hands too strong for him. They shall come and sing aloud on the height of Sion and they shall be radiant over the goodness of the Lord, over the grain, the wine, and the oil, and over the young of the flock and the herd. Their life shall become like a watered garden, and they shall never languish again. Then the young woman rejoice in the dance, and the young man and the old shall be merry. I will turn their, mour their mourning into joy. I will comfort them and give them gladness for sorrow. I will give the priests their fill of fatness, and my people shall be satisfied with my bounty, says the Lord. Psalm 84. How lovely is your dwelling place, O Lord of hosts! My soul longs, indeed it faints, for the courts of the Lord. My heart and my flesh sing for joy to the living God. Even the sparrow finds a home, and the swallow a nest for herself, where she may lay her young at your altars, O Lord of hosts, my King and my God. Happy are those who live in your house, ever singing your praise. Happy are those whose strength is in you, in whose heart are the highways to Zion. As they go through the valley of Baca, they make it a place of springs. The early rain also covers it with pools. They go from strength to strength. The God of gods will be seen in Zion. O Lord God of hosts, hear my prayer. Give ear, O God of Jacob. Behold our shield, O God. Look on the face of your anointed. For a day in your courts is better than a thousand elsewhere. I would rather be a doorkeeper in the house of my God than live in the tents of wickedness. For the Lord God is a sun and shield. He bestows favor and honor. No good thing does the Lord withhold from those who walk uprightly. O Lord of hosts, happy is everyone who trusts in you. The Holy Gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ according to Matthew. 
In the time of King Herod, after Jesus was born in Bethlehem of Judea, wise men from the east came to Jerusalem asking, Where is the child who has been born King of the Jews? For we observed his star at its rising and have come to pay him homage. When King Herod heard this, he was frightened and all Jerusalem with him. And calling together all the chief priests and scribes of the people, he inquired of them where the Messiah was to be born. They told him, in Bethlehem of Judea, for so it has been written by the prophet, and you, Bethlehem, in the land of Judah, are by no means least among the rulers of Judah. For from you shall come a ruler, who is to shepherd my people Israel. Then Herod secretly called for the wise men and learned from them the exact time when the star had appeared. Then he sent them to Bethlehem, saying, Go and search diligently for the child, and when you have found him, bring me word so that I may also go and pay him homage. When they had heard the king, they set out. And there, ahead of them, went the star that they had seen at its rising until it stopped over the place where the child was. When they saw that the star had stopped, they were overwhelmed with joy. On entering the house, they saw the child with Mary, his mother, and they knelt down and paid him homage. Then opening their treasure chests, they offered him gifts of gold, frankincense, and myrrh. And having been warned in a dream not to return to Herod, they left for their own country by another road. This is the gospel of the Lord. In the name of God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Amen. A couple of weeks ago, um, someone uh, made a very kind gesture and sent uh, this plant to us um, just uh, to offer condolences on the passing of Suzanne's dad, uh, my father-in-law, Paul Edwards. And uh, the plant was um, what um, had some fancy Latin name, but all is known as a peace lily. It's a beautiful plant, very kind of waxy, dark green leaves and these flowers that are uh, white flowers that kind of look like cobras almost. And um, at first, I wasn't even sure if it was a real plant or not. It was just so, like, flawless. And so I um, took the plant, put it on our coffee table at uh, our house, and kind of just uh, forgot about it for a couple days and uh, walked by a couple days later. And uh, CJ, my son, pointed out that, uh, you know, that the plant had completely gone flat uh, and just kind of keeled over on all sides, uh, the leaves, the flowers, everything just like melted uh, on uh, in the center of our coffee table. Um, and uh, just, you know, really putting on display for everyone to see my talent, my, uh, as a, you know, having a green thumb and all. And, uh, but CJ quickly diagnosed the problem and realized that it needed water. And so he poured some water uh, in this plant and probably within an hour, it had completely perked up to its original uh, kind of glorious self, uh, just full of uh, vibrancy and life. Um, not unlike when we had, uh, Suzanne and I were in seminary in Austin, Texas. And if you've ever been to Texas, uh, the heat can be super oppressive in the summer. And we had a little garden in, in the back of our house. And in August, uh, I mean, for, for much of the time, it would uh, be, um, you know, throughout the year, it would just be abundant and green and all kinds of stuff growing. But uh, in August, in the, in the kind of peak of the heat, uh, the sun would just melt uh, everything in the garden until uh, I would go out there and I'd have to make special watering uh, visits out there and just fill up the garden. Uh, the basil plants were kind of all keeled over and the flowers that we had and everything. And, uh, but as soon as you watered the garden, no matter how hot it got, as soon as you watered the soil, the plants would revive themselves and they would uh, perk up and, um, and uh, continue their splendor. Um, 
these images make me think of today's passage. And today's uh, Old Testament passage comes from Jeremiah. And we have the prophet Jeremiah, uh, chapter 31. And uh, the context, the historical context for Jeremiah is that he's writing at a time, probably about the mid sixth century before the common era, before Jesus uh, was around. And he is writing at the tail end of the Babylonian exile. Uh, or in the middle, in the midst of, uh, of the Babylonian exile. And this is a time, kind of a second exile experience already of uh, the Israelites, where they were taken by, by a foreign power, an imperial power, uh, the Babylonians, um, and, and not only destroyed their homeland and kind of laid it in ruins, but then deported people uh, back to Babylon, uh, where they would work, uh, you know, uh, as slaves and... and um, you know, lead really kind of hard lives. And, uh, and Jeremiah is speaking uh, to them in the midst of these challenging times. He's speaking to them in the midst of their suffering. And chapter 31 in Jeremiah comes uh, after about 29 chapters, 1 through 29 in Jeremiah, of just kind of basically describing this reality of challenge and suffering and kind of punishment and and a death and a misery um and then there's these three chapters uh 30 through 30 or four chapters 30 through 30 33 which is kind of known as the little book of consolation in jeremiah and it's and in and, and 31 chapter 31 this uh, reflects that and what we have here is that in the midst of their misery right not not having overcome it or surpassed it or or gone through it but in the midst of their misery Jeremiah is kind of uh, putting out this call uh, to uh, to sing aloud and to raise their voices in shouts of of rejoicing and um, in in the midst of their suffering and despair there is this promise that Jeremiah puts forth this promise of transformation where their mourning will become joy and their sorrow will become gladness. In the midst of their challenges, Jeremiah um, announces a promise of return. Now, not a return to how things were, but a vision of returning to something completely new um, and uh, an inclusive vision, an inclusive vision of return where even the blind and the lame, Jeremiah says, even those with child and those in labor, he says, uh, they will not stumble. Right, that even with all their marginalization and challenges, that even they will not stumble on their way to this new place, this new reality. This is not a vision of God necessarily changing, right, the physical bodies or the physical conditions of these groups of people or these individuals, the lame and the blind, um, but rather it's a vision of. Um, of, of, a trans, of transformed structures and transformed systems in society uh, where those who have, uh, who historically, were, were historically crooked and unjust paths in those societies, um, they'll become straight again, as Je uh, Jeremiah says, they'll become fair, uh, where nothing uh, will trip up uh, even uh, the least amongst uh, us and those who are on uh, the margins of society new paths that seem um, particularly designed in this passage, in this vision, to accommodate uh, those who have been wronged, the marginalized, the dismissed, and the disempowered. This passage from Jeremiah, it really speaks to me today. Um, and I imagine it speaks to all of us, uh, given the situation we find ourselves in. In the midst of this pandemic, certainly there's much of me that wants to return uh, to what we had before. Um, top of the list is, you know, hugs and, and uh, physical hugs, right, uh, at the peace or church karaoke or, or singing Christmas carols together um, or live music or, uh, you know, shared meals or community dancing uh, or visiting family and friends. Um, there's a lot of me uh, that wants to return to those things that we had before, but there's even more of me. There's even more of me these days that wants to return to a new place, uh, that a place where life feels like a watered garden, 
right? Like a, a, right, a freshly watered garden. And as, Jai, as uh, Jeremiah says, where uh, nobody will ever languish. Again, what a great vision that where uh, the community is like a freshly watered garden and nobody will ever languish again. The message I hear today from Jeremiah is that challenging times such as Israel's 26 centuries ago and, and ours today, they require us to imagine and to begin embodying ways to not simply return to how things were, uh, but to begin to chart a new path um, to the way that things can be. The promises uh, that he lays out uh, in this passage are um, abundant life, their justice, equity, community celebration, singing, dancing, and joy. There's even a promise uh, that priests will have their fill of fatness. And that makes me, and with my panza, with my, you know, this extra luggage that I'm carrying here, I feel like that makes me a living testament uh, that God's promises are already uh, being realized in our midst, right as we speak. And so as we begin this new year, um, and we move just a little bit further away from this dumpster fire we call 2020, let us begin to receive and perhaps even embrace this Jeremiah promise of newness for ourselves. May we begin to practice hope again. Um, and even as our challenges continue to increase, may we begin to practice a little bit of hope again. And in the months ahead, a month of, in the months ahead, uh, as we begin to you know, start to collect and gather our things in anticipation of, of heading back home to how things were, may we follow the advice of Jeremiah today. And may we follow the example of the Magi and go home uh, by another road uh, to a place that really we've never fully been to before. Prayers of the People I ask your prayers for God's people throughout the world, for our bishops John and Diane, for this gathering, and for all ministers and people. Pray for the Church. I ask your prayers for peace, for goodwill among nations, and for the well-being of all people. Pray for justice and peace. I ask your prayers for the poor, the sick, the hungry, the oppressed, and those in prison. Pray for those in any need or trouble. I ask your prayers for all who seek God or a deeper knowledge of him. Pray that they may find and be found by him. I ask your prayers for the departed especially those who have perished due to COVID-19. Pray for those who have died. Praise God for those in every generation in whom Christ has been honored. Pray that we may have grace to glorify Christ in our own day. Almighty God, to whom our needs are known before we ask, help us to ask only what accords with your will and those good things which we dare not or in our blindness cannot ask. Grant us for the sake of your Son, Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. And now let us pray the prayer that Jesus himself taught us to pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, Hallowed be thy name, thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. And may the blessing of Almighty God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit be upon you all this day and forevermore. Amen. Go in peace to love and serve the Lord. Thanks be to God.
Well, now we will continue our service uh, on Zoom exclusively. Uh, we'll cut our live feed on Facebook and uh, where we will have uh, continue and have a conversation about the readings we've heard today, uh, perhaps reflect on the sermon or whatever else we might bring today's conversation. If you would like to join us, please check the links uh, in the Facebook post uh, and we'll look forward to seeing you there.